Hello again and welcome back to week 37 of year 3 of the Religious Education Initiative. This is day 3. We're continuing our way through the Gospel of Matthew. We're in the middle of Matthew chapter 13. We just heard the parable, or the explanation rather, of the parable of the sower and the, uh, the additional parable of the weeds and the wheat. Uh, Jesus also last time explained why he speaks in parables. So this time we'll see him proceed with still more parables, and we should be alert for a continuation and elaboration of the themes that we have seen already in the last few weeks. So, this is verse 31 of chapter 13. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Jesus told the crowds all these things in parables. Without a parable, he told them nothing. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth to speak in parables. I will proclaim what has been hidden from the foundation of the world. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field, which is a parenthesis we read last week. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then... The righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen, or he who has ears to hear, let him hear. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, He went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. When Jesus had finished these parables, he left that place. Now, on the one hand, the the explanation of the parable of the weeds, that's, that's very clear and easy for us to understand. The other elements here, though, the parable of the mustard seed, the yeast, and, uh, and even the, the other three parables about finding what is precious, I think these actually reflect and, and, and illustrate what we're seeing with Saul in our day one reading and what, even what we saw with the leaders of the Church of Corinth. There is always the temptation for us to perceive what is according to the rules and guidance of the world, of the world where wealth and power are what is most valuable, But the kingdom of God always operates beginning from small things, from humble things, from meek things that entrust themselves to God and that God works in. So Saul, in his apparent humility, saying, I am the least of the tribes of of, of the sons of Benjamin, from the least of the households, when he's actually from wealth, it's a false humility. He actually thinks he is worth something. And we see this come forth. He thinks that he can buy the grace of God that he has something that is worth giving. And this is where he goes wrong. And we will see the contrast with David as, as time goes on. Uh, the same is what the, the, the leaders of the church in Corinth are being called to. 
they're tempted to think of themselves as important, as needing to stand on their dignity, to, to bring everyone in line. And they do have a responsibility to leadership. But first of all, they have a primary responsibility to humility, to repentance themselves, and to faithfulness. So uh, this may be helpful. Regardless, God bless you. We'll see you all for next week.